what's going on? Hi, Amor, I miss you. I'm at home, I'm in Brooklyn, New York. Not in my home, but in the home of Brooklyn. And I just wanted to thank everyone for Amor's birthday wishes on Friday. And um, I'm here actually looking at a charter school for Amor. And this goes into a conversation about just being present and thinking about what your children's needs are. I was talking to a young lady on the train uh, earlier today, and she was like, oh, what a beautiful bumblebee. She was like, um, you know, well, what? She was sharing some stuff about what was going on in her life. And longer story short, you want to have a little bit of support, even if it's like support from people that you went to school with, you know, things like that. They don't necessarily have to be your family, but you want to have some support in your union. And I don't mean like people that you teach yoga to, eeks, or like not to say that that's not a loving thing, but having external support and people that are outside of your family is totally different than people that you grew up with, people that can check you, just you know, keep certain things in balance and in order. And uh, balance and in order, just like letting you know, look, look, you look tired this week, you should probably get some more sleep. Shit like that. When you don't necessarily have those things, it's almost like a five digit hand and when that one digit is compromised, these four have to work so much harder. And when those two digits are compromised, those three digits have to work a lot harder. And I express it and explain it like that because it is not something that you think about in your 20s. Like, okay, you know, you take certain things with a grain of salt, you're grateful for certain attraction, all this other stuff, but you wanna be sure that you have a little bit of support whether that be support from a community, support from a larger family, extended family support. You don't wanna be in a situation like myself where, you know, years later, you're like, wow, I really have no family, no friends, nobody to call. And that doesn't, it's nothing to do with the work that I've done, the energy that I've put out into the world, the uh, healing energy in the works, all that stuff is different than being able to talk to someone about your personal, your private, I don't do that not gonna lie the decisions that I've made the last 10 years have been just me in my life in my house raising my son thinking about you know uh, my goals my personal spiritual goals as well as the goals of the uh, whole in terms of my family and my family constituting my son and his father you know one thing that I wanted to talk about was you know out here now my son's father has um, a mother she's alive um, they don't have the best relationship. They maybe spoken once in like the last 10 years for whomever you spend time with. You want for some type of holistic experience, some type of healthy environment to take place so that whatever you bring into the world can be received by that. If that is not there, it is going to be mayhem and your personal relationship is eventually going to be strained. I didn't know that. I definitely thought that we could beat the odds. I definitely said, well, you know, the work that we do in terms of communal work and just being present for others, you know, is one thing. But, you know, again, when you are helping others and when you are in a position to whatever, just impart yoga, different things like that, that's totally different than like having a relationship with your mom or an aunt or a sister or somebody close to you that you can confide in and that you can talk up to about personal stuff or just things that might be taking place in your life. When that doesn't happen, you have to not only pray a little bit more, write a little bit more, um, be honest with the things that you're seeing manifest in your, your uh, own environment. Those are the keys. If you're not doing that, it might take a little longer for you to realize why certain mishaps are taking place, why certain things aren't being attracted into your realm. When you give and you, um, like let's say, you allow one person a month to just, you know, take a week and just sleep at your house because, you know, they're having difficulties or, you know, that was kind of who I was. You know, losing a parent at a young age, at 20, it really was a difficult transition into adulthood. Everybody's transition is difficult, but what I recognize now that I'm 40, is that when you don't have certain support, nobody's gonna really you know, tap your shoulder and keep you abreast of certain things that people in your family that just might have you know, your good interest at heart invested. So you know, for me, today I actually walked by 
the uh, house I grew up in for 20 years. And, uh, you know, the night, I spoke about this before, but the night of my mom's funeral, I was kicked out with my sister. And uh, that changed the course of our lives. You know, you go, well, why, what, what happened in her family, what took place. Basically, it was just, you know, wanting to control a home. And um, we didn't know that we were the recipients in the will. So, you know, certain people with monies, my grandfather, my uncle, people that never wanted me to talk about this, you know, rendered the will and did whatever they needed to do to make sure that we didn't live there. You know, um, I was in college at the time, had two more years and, you know, it was much more beneficial to rent out the space to strangers than to think of, you know, your granddaughter or your, ch you know, your mother, whatever. My grandfather, who was my mother's father, I grew up with him and my grandmother. Once my grandmother passed, two, three years later, my, my um, mom passed, and it was like all security and protection in that maternal realm definitely uh, exited stage left. And it's not to say that they kept things in order, but they definitely uh, must, have, must have kept certain energies at bay because, you know, my grandfather wouldn't have done that, wouldn't have kicked this out if my mom, you know, pe you know didn't pass. And I say that to say there was a, a definite respect and a definite energy there that just wasn't crossed. So when my mom passed, you know, all bets were off. It was like, look, let's get these girl out the house and rent it. And, you know, we're going to keep it and take it over. And I want my money. And these are the things that people don't like sharing and talking about. But it's indicative in terms of your usherance into adulthood. So, you know, 2021, 20, I'm a grown up. But thinking about it now at 40 and having all this time to digest energies in my past I definitely did not feel worthy to be accepted by a holistic wholesome family it's not because I didn't feel good about myself but it's going into a theme of feeling burdened or feeling like a burden to someone um, at 21 I just wanted to do what I was doing which was find an apartment take care of myself and you know become a grown-up in a sense not necessarily live off of anybody not ask for any financial help do whatever I had to do because you know three jobs after college it wasn't anything for me to think of working and being consistent so that I could just live in Brooklyn so I did that for a number of years and what I will say is that attracting an amazing man an amazing partner at the time I didn't do the knowledge to his family situation as much as I should have. Um, yes, we, we did. We, we talked about so much in the first couple years was about that, but I didn't project. You know what I'm saying? I didn't think like, okay, you know, he got two baby mamas that don't like him. He got, you know, a mother that don't talk to him. He, you know, has been absconded from his family. Let me help. Let me, let me be of service. Okay, he's having difficulty. Sure, you can crash on my couch. And that formed an amazing union, but it was a union formed in necessity and a union formed in survival. And I say that to say, yes, love was there. You need that, right? But the through line was, look, we both have been, um, you know, abandoned and kicked out and dealt with in a really tumultuous way by our families. So let's become each other's. So I put a lot of energy into that. And gratefully enough, you know, I'm grateful that Asir has such respect for me and still wants to, uh, you know, build in certain aspects, you know. But for myself, it's not to say that that wasn't something that I wanted, but taking in all the energy of what uh, manifested for at least, you know, 15 years was something that really pressured our union because in having no family support, in having no um, body to turn to, you know, my son has two uncles that he's met a couple times, but it's been about, you know, seven years that he, or maybe like five years that he's seen them. He went to a funeral. So, you know, but there's no conversations. There's no, and what I realized is in, you know, just traveling and taking some time, a friend of mine said to me, you know, this is an elder gentleman of mine. He has a wife, J Japanese, wonderful family. And he said to me, he was like, oh, well, you know, I wanted this, that, and the third, but let me speak to us here first, you know, and make sure. And that spoke volumes because, you know, anything that I do, you know, I make sure in terms of my son, I make sure that, you know, daddy is on board. But what I've discovered and what I really learned is that, you know, a lot of people have this uh, um, saying, you know, the sins of the father are passed on to the child, all this stuff. And I didn't want to really believe in things like that. But what I've learned is the relationships that, 
you know, um, my son's father manifests in his uh, life as well as in his family definitely has played a role in my son's upbringing as well as me being received by a family or by the whole. So just based on being of support at a time where no one in his family really was, these are his two brothers and his mom, he's going through a lot of stuff back in the day with, you know, being kept from his kids and all of that's to say that lasted and my son has a brother and a sister. You guys might have seen Victory came and visited once, but he's only, you know, seen her once and she's not really, um, she's a grown up now, you know, and grown ups make decisions and they're not in each other's lives the way that I had hoped for them to be. And it's not to say that that might manifest, not manifest in the future, but within the last 10 years of Amor's life, he's met his sister once, he's never met his brother. And uh, he's 21, his brother's 21, his sister's 19. And I talk about this to say, you know, all of these traumatic events have separated our families and have kept us at bay. Um, I fought really hard and diligently to keep them together and to uh, do all this work with communication and you know family dinners and whatever it is I needed to do with my space in my 20s and early 30s to just keep that you know uh, his brothers around and to keep that energy cultivated because I could see that there was love there and that's the main thing but when you're not necessarily raised with your siblings uh, these American black families are really and I say that to say you know I'm Panamanian so, you know, it wasn't anything to think conceptually of, you know, grandparents taking over, grandparents being in the households. Um, when you get a little older, that's actually what keeps you really young and vital is being a presence in your, you know, your children's children's lives. And, um, you know, I'm out here now in, in Brooklyn and it's a reality check. But, but I say reality check with that salute because I've taken all this time to really just think of what I can do creatively to uh, manifest certain dreams in my life and to uh, be grateful for all the things that we've learned. We're supposed to, you know, heal and talk about stuff, but everybody wants to be so perfect and so flawless that they stay in unions that aren't really filled with passion and all these other things. And it's not to say that you don't push through those things, but people would rather be unhappy as long as they can control someone else's happiness and that's just not the way to live so i say all this to say you know being out here in brooklyn it's been a reality check in miami of course you know i'm raising my son it's just myself and his father and his father travels and i've made decisions to not be in an intimate and personal i didn't want to be in a relationship anymore with him you know but it's like what are you talking about you've been with this person for 13 plus years i'm going to straighten the camera a little i think that's why i'm turning my head is turning you've been in a relationship with this person for a really long time and um you know i really um can't say that my heart space wasn't completely there years ago but in not having uh, certain energies and in moving out of New York, not based on need, but based on necessity, not being able to pay rent, even though you know you have jobs and you're doing all this stuff, just constantly being strained. Hello, Selena, what's going on? Where are you missing beats? The beats that were missed were really something that I don't think that either of us could, you know, uh, foreshadow and like catch up to. They were just beats in life, like, wow, we're gonna make it happen, we're gonna get a place, you know. Brooklyn, we must have lived in 10 apartments in this city. And then, you know, you're pregnant, you know, uh, it's a reality check in the sense that no one is um, at present in your life personally. They know what your son's father does business-wise, but having business relationships is totally different than building some uh, personal ones. And I can't say that I didn't try and I didn't give up myself and do all that I could, but you know, it's a bipartisan uh, relationship. It's a bipartisan action. And I say that to say, after moving to Miami, I kind of took some time and learned. And after I separated out of my union figure, recalibrate because when you have a child with someone, you're gonna know them for the rest of your life if you are respecting their role and position. You know, my son's father has been kept from his other two children for 12 years, almost as though he was in prison. And yes, when they got older, he made sure and 
found one of them, reached out, talked, but by then so much of that upbringing was broken and so much of the pain was seeped into the relationships, meaning that, you know, when you don't see your a parent for that long, regardless of them knowing the truth, I think that it still played a role on his happiness, on our union, on everything. And that is a part of his life, so that became a part of my experience. And you want to be very careful in your union to protect all those types of things from happening. And that comes with, of course, people being able to say, yo, you know, you got to do this, that, and the third. Like, I know, brother, like, what's really going on? And I don't think that, you know, communities really know how to be involved because you're not. You're not supposed to be involved in other families' business. And, you know, I bounced not wanting to become a burden ever. I never had any roommates since the age of 20. Sierra was the only person that lived with me, you know, and honestly, I didn't think like, wow, well, you know, in in being such a, a force in this, in this house, other houses might become weakened. And I say that to say, okay, you moved to Miami, whatever, I did that because the rent was cheaper, I didn't feel like we would be a burden to his brothers or asking for help or babysitting. I said, look, I gotta figure out how to raise my son pretty much on my own. We don't have grandparents, we don't have siblings that are active, we don't have, so what do we have? What is at you know, our disposal? So, you know, taking at least five plus years to pay off student loans, to clean up debt, to make decisions for your future, because no one is stopping you, no one's gonna say, look, I know this, that, and the third, but think, you know, 10 years from now, which I was, but without any help, I've always been kind of like running forward to take steps back because when you're consistently paying rent and you don't have that springboard or just, you know, anything, I've watched people that do have it go so far because, you know, you can leave your stuff in your mom's basement, you can come home, you, God forbid, you have an argument with your significant other, you can call a family friend, you can go to their house for the weekend, you can say, look, my dude, we're having some difficult times, I know you're tight, why don't you go to your brother's, blow off some steam, and in not having those things at our disposal or in them being cultivated, because again, this conversation, you know, let me speak to the, the, mat, the male aspect, taught me, oh, so many of these unions and, you know, family visits have to take place by the masculine energy making other people feel comfortable about whatever. So, you know, I can't call, you know, uncles per se and say, hey, look, I can, but it's going to be a little off because it wasn't permissible or it wasn't get granted by you know this person's family or by you know my son's father so i say all that to say you know i'm loving the experience the school was amazing but you know what my mini series is about i wanted to move to new york because i want to cast it and film it here i know it'll be fabulous my community is here the people that i feel connected to is here miami for me was just really taking time taking a decade to not only do the work that i needed to do as a mom to raise my son to make sure that he wasn't thrusted into a school too early meaning that i didn't want to put him into an environment without any family support you know let him at least get to know me before i have him raised so you know teaching him how to read doing all the homeschooling for nine plus years you know taking time to build my business all the things that i needed to do so you know i didn't necessarily put all my eggs into a you know a, a job when i moved out there and uh, all of that's to say you know it took me a little while it took me a good five years to save enough to raise my credit to pay off debt to help this that and the third so that you know certain business was taken care of and it's not just you know talking without anything being collected um but all of that's to say when you don't have that be thankful when you do don't leave home before you need to. Don't think that you need to have these grown experiences of living on your own before your stuff is in order. Um, I didn't really have the choice. I had to live on my own. I had to do certain things at 20 years old. But if I could have foreshadowed and had certain support, you know, I don't, I can't even imagine how quickly, how much more quickly I could have manifested certain stuff. Because, you know, get a couple of months to save some money and that 
you spend as much as you bring in now you got to wait a little longer to save 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 so I really wanted more to go to school here it's amazing a couple um, days check out the school and try to find a place you know um, with my son let me utilize and be grateful that I can I have a place that I can just Airbnb for a couple days and find out what my options are and honestly you know going to all of our old houses in the last two days visiting the house that I grew up in that's being occupied by a cousin of mine who doesn't want to share and isn't gonna share and longer story short you know they just don't want me around and after not going back for 20 years you know after they kicked me out and didn't call I think that I just didn't look back I didn't want to talk to people that treated me with such disdain and I've paid for that but I don't feel like the payment is bad I feel like you make decisions and you live with them I'm not one to go back and to ask hey um, you know cousin because I already know what the answer is gonna be and I'm not one to put myself in an environment in which people want to physically attack me for figuring out ways to not need them because that really is that's what happens people become angry when you figure out ways to not need them and to not to not thrive off of their approval so all of that's to say young people in love the way that you can preserve it and the way that you avoid being in situations where your heart is just totally pummeled is by saying if I don't have this that and the third then the other person should if I don't have you know grandparents and you want to marry or you want to be with someone who hopefully has one if um, you are uh, in certain situations that you find you know you're just giving 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 a lot and someone isn't meeting you back stop giving if you couple you know years in a row I would definitely think of asking you know friends and all that but you don't want to be a burden to your friends you don't want to ask you know our family what I realized before I made a decision you know and I separated and I say it with this is oh you didn't leave him and it's like no if you're if things aren't going well it was up to me to say look if I've been doing this for 15 years maybe I don't need to be doing this let me see what happens when I stop and so much has happened but it's not to say that any woman wants to uh, not accept a man's um, love or a man's wanting to be with you but when you've gone through the situations that we have and I've literally been in prison by you know his mom like it's not things that he could have prevented but these are things that happened when we were together so rather than you know talking bad and not wishing for I'm so grateful for where we are now but I definitely want to think about my future casting stuff helping others with roles creating funny storylines about you know life that hope you know hopefully touches the hearts and the minds of other people but also being honest this is a reality check and that's what the miniseries is called but you know this is a reality check this trip because okay five days go to orientation meet the teacher see if this is gonna work and honestly I can't uproot what I created for myself in Miami to on a box or a roommate situation with my son when I know that at 40 that's just not what's deserving in my life and that's not what I want to experience I would do it for a little while if I had the hope of some apartment some whatever but when you don't have family and you don't have you know people to ask for help you know I came today and I was like wow his mother is in the city you know I tried for years and then I started cursing people out like you know what don't return my calls don't be grateful for pictures don't you know call on birthdays or this that the third and that led to the last seven years being completely on my own and I'm grateful that it's here in our my life and in his son's life but we had our our kid knowing that we didn't have certain support so I can't complain I can't act like I didn't know what I was getting myself into in the sense of having to do a lot of work just for so you know all the people that is here is taught all the work that we've thinked these are not family members so at the end of the day you know you don't unless someone knows you and if you are private like my son's father no one's gonna know what you're going through and I respect privacy but what happens when you see someone drowning and you're like look maybe if a brother maybe 
that it's up to them to want to establish those unions and relationships and you end up becoming a real bad you know energy if you try to do so preemptively you know um, remove yourself from families that don't take you in uh, don't try to be like I, I, I don't take anything back I would give to you know who I gave to and be there because it taught me so much of myself and there it's still energy that's seen by the most high sometimes people are like well I didn't get credit God sees this so if God sees this you know I say I must have been a real contablunt in my past life or something because as happy and as at peace and as much as I want to be around I don't want to just entertain anything so I don't find myself just going out with just you know girlfriends and you know there's got to be a, a connection there and I felt that at the school I feel that at home much more than I have in Florida for the nine years that we've been there you know it's like safari act all the time and it's just really eclectic black woman in Miami when really there's a thousand of us out here so I don't stand out as much and it's not such an obtruse you know energy plus I didn't want my son to, his first school experiences to be you know he's the only because I know what that's like and at that age it's a little difficult even if you move to the black communities the black communities are somewhat apologetic they're a little more southern in Florida so you know taking all that into consideration it's a great you know his dad loves it that's great but in terms of attracting a community for my son uh, attracting stuff this past Friday was his 10th birthday and his mother and his father to be the main charge in his life and it's not to say that we're not enough bah humbug no every child needs a little you know you're messing up and I'm gonna tell you and even if that's not there you build it but I can't build that with a bunch of Latinos that are just looking at me as a you know the radical revolutionary you know Afro Latina and that's not it at all it's just you know I like my little reggae I like my little blunt once a month you know all of that and that's too obtruse for that environment that I didn't go to school in that I didn't go to high school at all of that I grew up in Bushwick so to come back and to see all of this it's fabulous y'all but hold on to your property don't do what my family did don't do what a Sears family did which is have disgruntled energy sell it to a whole bunch of Jew and strangers you understand or be so money hungry that you don't let anybody else live there because you know you're just living off the laurels of being in you know a, a mortgage free crib that's great but when you don't have any kids and you don't have a woman it would behoove you to allow someone that did you, you would think right and that's why I'm gonna ask I learned after you know separating and stuff and not you know being celibate for four or five years now it's gonna be five I learned that most people that were in our lives like privately or personally were really weighed down by us and were really like oh that that family and that's good to know I wanted to know that I wanted to know that some of our friends really saw us as a headache you know all oh, the one with the you know the, the guy that taught her huh? I, I needed to know those things and it didn't like alter my heart space it's just good to have clarity and to find out what you ensue what you you know uh, attract you know as much as you don't want to attract people that come off cult like when that starts happening it's up to you to go wow everybody that you know is around me is kind of nanu 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 and you know am I all of these things it's not your doing but it's definitely part your energetic responsibility to take heed of what it is and you know my son doesn't deserve all that but I raise him to a degree where you know don't worry about TOs don't worry about when people are ready they will enter your life and you are gonna have a full enough knife that I don't even want him thinking about the people that aren't there you know and I do check in you know do you miss a grandma grandpa but at the same token I think that it's important to fill children's lives with a bunch of abundance and if gymnastics and swimming are physical activities but I also mean not just being read a story or being talked to by my voice and my thinking mind because it's linear and you want to have a, a, a coalition almost so with that I'm not gonna talk too long I'm gonna probably break this up into I don't even know I don't care but what I do want to say is definitely communal communal is key and it's not to say we didn't know and Asir and I didn't do so much work in the last five years I haven't been of service but no I also had to be honest about everything and being the burdensome family and in coming off really heavy 
because no one wants to deal with people that don't have no parents and family and all of this. And I care of, and what it is I know I can consistently be in. You know, you don't uproot yourself from a great apartment to come to where you're in Airbnbs and haven't found one yet. So it's not to say that the credit isn't at 810 and I don't have the good, you know, that's all there. But what isn't and what I am looking forward to building is castings, communal support, being, you know, letting people try lotions, hands on, being where I'm from so it doesn't feel such like an isolated island. And if that's not real, at least having made the choice to switch up the energy so newness could flow. Because you can't keep doing the same thing and expect different results. Eventually, you gotta say, you know what? Let me switch this, that, and the third up and, you know, see what happens in, in a roommate situation with a whole bunch of post college grads because that's, you know, that thousand dollars, like that's what it's gonna attract in New York City without family or without roots. So don't uproot yours. Um, if it happens to you, you know, swallow your pride, take time, create great music and stories for us to enjoy, hopefully. And that's about it. But until then, uh, I have mosquitoes on the thing. I didn't put my halt on. I'm going inside to put some halt on. I uh, just took a shine. I don't want to put nothing on because I always feel so greasy. But now I'm going to get it and put it on. All right. Much love, you guys. Love you. Talk to you later. Peace.